Good day. Welcome to another episode of Masonic Humans. As you know, I'm Keith McKinnon, but today I am joined with two very special brothers. I have to my right, most worshipful, Stephen E. Mitchell. And to my left, Right Worshipful Rick Lynch, Curator Librarian, Grand Lodge of Rhode Island. Now, we're going to talk very briefly today about one of the Masonic temples that are still standing here in Rhode Island that I've been to, most worshipful has been to, and you, you've been there also, uh, that unfortunately is no longer a Masonic building. Uh, their condos, but the building still stands, and they've done a beautiful job in restoring the exterior of the building. Uh, I was there back in the, I believe, the early 90s, just when they were uh, cleaning out the building, uh, St. John's Lodge, uh, and the, the brother were kind enough to give me a tour, and I was just flabbergasted about the entire building. Uh, I even got to walk up the, the, the stairs to almost the, the um, uh, the widows watch up there at the top and, and look out the windows and whatnot and, and see all of the past uh, contractors initials and names scratched into the beams up in the attic uh, it's just phenomenal history uh it's nice the building is still there and in my opinion uh this building predates any other masonic building here in the united states and i'm talking about richmond virginia and yes i know you guys at uh, uh, um, Washington Lodge number three are going to be a little mad at me, 1799. Um, I, I feel that that predates it because what I understand in the reading that I've done and what was told to me that they actually begun work in 1758 on that building. They bought the property, they cleared the property, the Worcester Master laid one stone in the northeast corner. I believe the senior warden did the southeast or southwest. The junior warden did the other one. The secretary did, I think, the northwest. And then they planted a fifth one right in the center for Mother Earth. And then they, according to history, they covered them over. Uh, later on, they were able to, if I get this right, Rick, the Rhode Island Grand Assembly granted them permission to hold a lottery to raise funds. That's correct. And they were able to raise the funds in time. They began to, to dig out the foundation. But as I mentioned when I came down here as a talk, most worshipful, uh, that you all wanted to pick a fight with the British. And a mem number of members rode out to the Gatsby, which was a British revenue ship, and burnt them. Uh, and that started the whole commotion down here. Well, what I was told by the brethren that day is, they being fearful what the British would do in retaliation or in, in during the war because, they get, correct me, Rich, the, the British did occupy Newport for the entire war. They did, and that was kind of their center, and uh, consequently it made it difficult for St. John's to function. Function and, and do any type of work on a building. They covered everything in with hay, and then it was the late 1790s, they they dug everything out and then built the building. I think most of the is it 1802, I think? 1802 shoes? 1802. 1802. So the structure itself doesn't predate some of them, but the actual beginnings, yes. And I, when I look at Freemasonry, when you start something, that's the date you go with. Um, and that's what they said. And it's just very unusual how they did it. Now, Rich, tell me a little bit about, you've been in the building and, and they talked to you a little bit about it. Tell me a little bit about the, the lodging floor. Well, what was unique about the building is that, uh, the building is multi-story, but the lodge room was actually um, the third. The third floor room was actually a, a giant cathedral ceiling, and they needed more space. So what they did was they constructed a floor and they suspended it from the rafters, okay, with um, old ship rope, okay, which was eventually replaced with chains. So the actual lodge room was a suspended floor and if all the members actually were in the lodge room and started moving around you could actually get the lodge room to move around with you. What's kind of unique about the building in itself is for those who are real um, scholars of, of history of Freemasonry in America, the first recording of masonry taking place in America actually took place in Newport when Sephardic Jews came up from the south 
okay, and supposedly held a, well, it's written and it was discovered by, uh, in some of the papers of the Grand Lodge of Connecticut, that um, these Sephardic Jews were actually practicing uh, Freemasonry um, and eventually would uh, become the Toro Synagogue. So right from the very beginning, St. John's Lodge and before uh, in King David's Lodge, which was chartered by New York, um, the state of New York's Grand Lodge, they, uh, they were the very beginning of Freemasonry in Rhode Island. And the Lodge Room, um, unfortunately, that suspended thing was uh, demolished when uh, the thing was converted. And you talk a little bit about it being uh, refurbished. It's now high-end condominiums, eight condominiums that are in there. And they have preserved a lot of the architectural details into the, the hallways and, and what have you. But as you said, there's really no remnants of what the lodge looked like in there. Most well, where you've been there. Just very briefly, because we are running out of time. What was your personal experience with them? Well, my personal experience was as Grand Master, I was invited uh, by uh, St. John's to uh, visit with them and then to uh, process from uh, St. John's over to Turo Synagogue, where I gave a brief uh, talk about uh, uh, Rhode Island uh, Freemasonry, which was not certainly not new to Turo Synagogue, but they have been rather illegal for the current uh, parishioners of, of uh, Turo and it was a, to me it was just such a high honor to be able to speak to the to the to that congregation of the oldest Jewish uh, synagogue in the United States North, North America North America and has a, a direct connection with the uh, Freemasonry. So it was, it was just it was such a wonderful, wonderful experience for me and for members of Friendship Lodge who accompanied me on the, on that visit and the, the members of Friendship Lodge, uh, the members of uh, Rhode Island Freemasonry itself. We had a large turnout uh, that evening. It was wonderful and the inside of that lodge was just unbelievable it, to me. So much history. You could just feel that history as you were sitting there in that lodge room and as you entered that building to, to notice all of the artifacts that were there. Uh, and then to walk those stairs, which were not in current day uh, specifications, but uh, we, we made it to the uh, third floor uh, for the watching itself. It, it was just absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you too, brother, for bringing that uh, information to me. The building, as I said, still stands. Uh, we're gonna have pictures of the building when this video is posted. Richard's gonna send me a couple of the interior pictures. Um, remember, brother, if you are in the area there in Newport, uh, the building still stands on School and Congress, uh, right on the corner. Uh, please don't harass the tenants that live there by wanting to see the inside because they are condos. But the outside has been restored almost back to its original grandeur uh, when I believe it was Peter Harrison designed the building for the lodge. Um, just one last thing uh, that I don't know if these two brethren knew, but it is in the history of St. John's Lodge, and it was told to me that day, is that... Uh, just at the beginning of World War One, a lot of the Masonic bodies uh, were opening up uh, Masonic service centers for the the, the men uh, who were Freemasons, and there was one open in Newport. The Grand Master was there. A number of other dignitaries, military and political dignitaries, were there. Harry Truman himself was there. Past Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Missouri was there, and he's the one who dedicated the rooms in memory of or for. The Masonic Service Association. It's kind of ironic that, as I was mentioning to these two gentlemen today, that is someone's living room or bedroom today, and they probably have no idea that Harry Truman dedicated their bedroom. <laughs> so uh, you never know about Freemason. But with that, most worshipful, again, I thank you. Right, thank worshipful, you. I thank you. And that does it. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, uh, give us a thumbs up, and thank you very much.